again, everybody, and welcome to College Flash Classics. I'm your host, Dave Neal. Well, the battle of the quarterbacks, the veteran Tim Couch versus the rookie Quincy Carter. The year was 1998, and Jefferson Pilot Sports had this classic matchup of the two best quarterbacks in the SEC that year. Carter set Georgia's freshman record for season passing yards in 98, while the Kentucky football media guide had to be reprinted to read Tim Couch, Tim Couch, Tim Couch at the end of the year. In 1997, Couch had broken or tied 27 Kentucky and SEC records. In 98, he was well on his way to rewriting his own record book, averaging almost 400 yards passing and an incredible four touchdowns per game. Couch was one of the finalists that year in the voting for the Heisman Trophy. Even with all of the attention given to these great signal callers, there's no way you can overlook the best athlete on the field. Mr. Champ Bailey. Bailey had become a two-way star at Georgia and had burned Vanderbilt for two touchdowns the week before. Both teams came into Commonwealth Stadium with five victories and were in the hunt for the SEC East title. Kentucky would have to beat Georgia to have any hope, and the Bulldogs needed this victory to stay within one game of undefeated Tennessee. It's Georgia versus Kentucky from October of 1998. Let's pick up the action on the game's opening drive. So Tim Couch comes onto the field. Those are his career stats, the 63 touchdowns. He's four behind Eric Zire, the former Georgia great, on the all-time SEC list. And Bob, you always look at that touchdown to interception ratio. 68 to 23 is incredible. And there's how Mummy says he has 12 running plays, four passing plays in the playbook. Now they just run modifications off those basic four. Goes to Anthony White. So Kentucky tries to run the ball on the first play. Here's a look at our Nations Bank Small Business starting lineup for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, it's a good, it's a very good offense. Anthony White is interesting. He's listed as the fullback, but he leads the team in receptions. The offensive line, of course, Comstock is the, they're all seniors across the front, but Comstock is really the one that kind of anchors this line. Yeast split out to this near side on second down and nine for Kentucky. Look at the time Couch is getting. Simpson, he's got his man. That's Kevin Coleman over the middle. Great time, Dave. Oh, yeah. Well, see, you do one of two things. You either blitz him and try to get pressure, and then you lose coverage, or else you sit back and try to get the coverage. Of course, the Bulldogs' defense is led up in the middle by Paul Snellings. He's the defensive lineman that doesn't have any sacks this year, but he has to get them today. The linebackers, Grant, has got to put a lot of pressure on from the outside back. And Jeff Harris, we expect him to have quite a day today. He's going to be real busy, Bob. 15 yards on the pitch and catch. And a Kentucky first down, and the pitch goes to Shanklin. They like his motor. He's got good, quick feet. He tries to turn the corner, picks up a couple of yards. Richard Seymour slides out for Georgia and makes the stop. The sophomore out of Gadsden, South Carolina. And that's Adrian Hollingshed, their fine middle linebacker, 44. And there's Seymour, who made the stop just a moment ago. Well, Couch is so confident in his passing that he feels any time they can complete a pass. So they're trying to establish their running game a little bit early. They've run on both first downs so far. And now it's second down. Here's the blitz. Couch dumps it off. He gets it out to Anthony White. And he mutters near midfield for a first down. Catch, a uh, catch about got blasted by Champ Bailey in the back, backfield, but got rid of him. But you see, we talked about vision in the opening. Watch, he sees Champ Bailey right there, four on a line to him. Bang, he knows he's going to get hit, and what a little dump pass. Look at this. It's almost like a long handoff to Anthony White. White knows what to do with the football once he gets upfield. A great vision there again by Tim Couch. Corey Robinson made the stop for Georgia, but not before Kentucky gets a first down. First and ten at the Kentucky 48. Couch zips it out to Yeast. There's the screen. And Yeast picks his way into uh, Georgia territory down to the 45-yard line. Orantes Grant makes the stop for Georgia. Let's go downstairs again to Dave Logan. Okay, Bob, just moments ago I had a chance to catch up with Georgia coach Jim, Don Jim Donnan. And he said he told his team to come up here and not get caught into the atmosphere. Take the crowd out. He said it's 11 on 11 defensively. Don't try and get caught up into the matchups. And when you have the ball offensively, there will be some holes that you can exploit from the Kentucky defense. He said, when you have them, take advantage of them. 
David, I think that's a good point because both coaches say if you get a chance to score in this game, you better because this might be a track meet all day long. Anthony White spins his way close to a first down. And a little mouthy going on. Marcus Stroud tells Anthony White what he thinks about things. Well, this is a good move right here. Back inside, twist back inside to get that first down, and they get enough yardage for that first down. Keep the chains moving. So Anthony White helps Kentucky pick up yet another first down on this opening drive. Scoreless here in the first quarter at Commonwealth Stadium. Kentucky has already chewed up three minutes of the clock. They lead the SEC in time of possession. Couch, Couch gets tripped up. Couch knocked down in the backfield. Rick Rovich gets through and gets him around the ankles. You know what's interesting on that? He saw Rovich and he tried to come out of the pocket, buzz out of the pocket around to the backside, but Rovich sweeps his arm. Left of your screen, look at Rovich, switch inside. Now he's got a beat on him. You see Couch right there? And look at Rovich, just makes that tackle on the shoestring right there, grabs that foot. That's a great tackle. It really was, and it's back to the Kentucky 46-yard line. Cats have to get to the 31 for a first down. Again, Cats with time. Over the middle, has got his tight end. Good pickup that time. James Whalen gets the reception. Junior out of Portland, Oregon. Grant makes the stop for Georgia. So it'll be a second and long, a third and long play for Kentucky. Well, two good things. Look at this. They only rush two men. They're dropping all the rest in defense. You can see all the all the linemen coming back off. You only have two rushers. Now you know they're going to complete the football. You've got to get there to a, in a hurry. And that's what Joe Kynes is telling his defense. Swarm them. Get after them in a hurry. They're blitzing on third down. Couch picks it up. It's got his man. Craig Yeast over the middle. Yeast to the corner and touchdown, Kentucky. The air raid at full throttle on the opening possession as the Wildcats take the lead. Well, great poise by Couch. Watch this. Stand back in the pocket. Wait, wait, wait. He's got time. Look at this pass. Right in stride. Geese never has to break a stride. Doesn't have to come back for it. Doesn't have to reach out for it. Hits him right in the pocket. The results are the same. Touchdown. And you see Yeast now, seventh all time in the SEC with 173 receptions, and that one goes for a touchdown as Kentucky takes an early 7 0 lead here at Commonwealth Stadium. Tim Couch throws his 26th touchdown pass of the season, and the Cats have the early lead. It was a very impressive start for the Wildcats with two scoring drives already to start the game. On Kentucky's next possession, they drove the ball down all the way to the Georgia one-yard line. We now pick it up with the Wildcats going for it on fourth down. So Kentucky knocking on the door again, and Couch leads them out. And he gets a warm reception. He's got the four folks in the end zone. Down conversions. Kentucky has had 17 of them. And Couch keeps it, and he's going to be stopped at the three yard line. Georgia hunkers down and makes the play. Arantis Grant not fooled by the quarterback keeper, and Georgia has stopped Kentucky. Bob, that is great coaching, is what made that play work. Grant is on the outside right here. He's got outside containment. You see, the minute he sees the fake, look at the speed that Grant has to run down Tim Couch. But he had backside containment. He did his job. And he's already got five tackles. Good defense that time. Well, that may be the spark that Georgia needs to keep stay in this football game. They've, it's almost as if they've taken a breath. And just think about this. Kentucky down in this situation could have at least gotten three points. They come away with none. Georgia now on the attack. First down. Pass the ball back to Bradley. And Bradley gets a couple out across the five-yard line. Bradley, a senior out of Albany, Georgia, had 25 yards last week against Vanderbilt. And Gaten is the guy who runs him out of bounds. Boy, and this is where Carter is so deadly because he's got that run option where if he sees that seam, if they try to drop back, he can sprint up through there and he can make you hurt in a hurry. 
But they need to get a first down. They've got to get out to about the 14 yard line for the first down. Carter on the last possession through his fourth interception of the year. He's got eight touchdowns to his credit. Now he's going to roll. Now he's going to run. And now he's going to get a first down out across the 20. Boy, he just glides. <laughs> he just put up just enough speed to get that first down and just skipped out of bounds. That's what speed will do for you. He played briefly last week against Vanderbilt, trying to rest that injured shoulder. He was three of six, but three, two of those three passes went for touchdowns. Boy, nice block there on the outside. I think that's Stinchcomb, number 79. He gets a good block there on the inside by Herndon, 73, the guard. And that allows him just to get out there. See, he's such a threat. You've got to keep him in the pocket. You've got to keep him contained. And they, everybody knows the Army has. He can throw the football. Winding down the first quarter. Georgia trying to get something going offensively. Carter, the throwback down the sideline, and it's to Orlandis Carey. He was in bounds. Yes, I know. At the 37-yard line, Orlandis Carey kept his feet in bounds and eye on the ball and makes a great catch. Well, Gary looked back at the football, and the defender, when he looked back, Gary just turns around. It's going to be roll action back this way here. Now, look, throw back, and watch Gary just get those uh, foot down and bounds. Right there, he catches the football. The official in great position to make the call clearly in bounds. That was a big play for Georgia. They needed something to get out in where they can move the football and get into their total offensive, uh, just their total offensive game plan, Bob. Snedeker on defense for Kentucky was really in pretty good position. Just Gary made a great play. First down, dogs. They're going to run the option again. And Carter's still on his feet. Still moving. And in all that, he loses a yard. Gosh, you made about four people miss. He made an exciting one-yard loss, but look at the number of the people that he made miss. He just made people all along the line miss. Marlon McCree with the stop for Kentucky. McCree number 30, an interesting story. Uh, undersized, as we said, for a linebacker, but he gets a lot of speed out of there, and the really is able to put a lot of pressure on. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South You Call the Play feature. I look at a big call from SEC Games Past. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, and David Logan with you today from Commonwealth Stadium as we're winding down the first quarter with Kentucky leading 10 0. But Georgia moving. Go back. Pass all the way. Little slant pattern got his man. And that's Champ. Champ Bailey for a first down to midfield. Jeff Zerker makes the stop and Georgia on the move with a first down now at the Kentucky 49 yard line. Tim Couch today, of course, trying to recover from a poke in the eye. Let's go downstairs to David Logan. Okay, Paul, I want to get you caught up on the medical report that Tim Couch took a thumb to the left eye. Right now it's ready, has some swelling, but team officials say he will be back. Back to you. First down, Georgia. Carter has the ball swatted away. Good pressure that time up the middle. I think it was George Massey. Who was able to get his hands up? John Rader was also right there. That's what you want those defensive linemen to do when they get penetration and get back in there, get those arms up. Look and see if it's 97 right there. Yeah, and Rader, you're right, was right there with him. Knocked that football down. It's kind of like we used to call it throwing through the trees. Didn't make it that time. Of course, trees are what, 90% here. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When I'm hitting golf balls, it always seems to knock them down. <laughs> They're the front four for Kentucky. They've been pretty effective so far. 98, Marvin Major. Second down, Carter. That's a, a full play on the draw. Carter with fancy footwork. Gets around Zerker. He's on his way. Quincy Carter is going to score from midfield. Bob, you talk about missed tackles. We're going to have to write the names down because Major missed them to start. Then McCree missed him. And then, of course, the last one was Searcher, number 49. All three of them had a shot at him. Let's see if we can see that again. Here we go. Inside, there's one missed tackle. That's Major. There's McCree missing, number 30. Now watch Searcher right there. Searcher, he runs by him. What an athlete. I tell you what, Chris Terry also had a great block right <laughs> down in the middle of the field to spring him, too. He pancakes somebody. Half Hines boots it through. Kentucky gives up a big play there as Quincy Carter runs it in from half a hundred. First 
to catch his numbers. 139 yards, and we've still got 10 14 to play in the second. Gosh, I'm trying to think when he's throwing an incompletion. Pitch the line. There's his one. Boy, he's a hard runner, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. He's about six foot one, about 190, 195 pounds, but he runs a lot harder than that. He's not a juke type runner. He's more of a smash runner trying to slide off the edge. Glenn Ford made the play for Georgia on the stop. Ford, of course, last week uh, had the block punt for the touchdown and also was shaken up in the game, but he's kind of got his bell rung a little bit. But Ford is back out there and made a play there. Second down, and they say about four yards to go. Screen pass, a dump pass. Out to McCord, and McCord picks up short yardage as Champ Bailey again gets out there and make the play. Well, that's that little tunnel screen that they would see so often. It's actually a, it's a throw behind the line of scrimmage, and Champ Bailey really comes up quick. You talked about closing speed. That's one of the great things that Champ Bailey has. So when he plants that back foot, Bob, and he comes up to the ball, he just explodes. Third down. Kentucky's got to get it to the 16-yard line. The blitz. Dump it out. Swing guy out of the back of Derek Homer. And he powers inside the 15. That should be a first down. Grant runs him down, but Couch and Homer combined for another UK first down. Bob, the vision again. We talk about it. It's going to sound like a broken record. But Couch is looking strong side. He's looking over here. He doesn't see it. Last minute. Look at him. Look way over here to Homer. Coming out of the backfield. Now watch Homer does. Puts that hit down. Knows how far to get. Picks up that first down. Look at the completion percentage. That's a new NCAA record. And the pass is to qualify 66%. Actually 66.1. Audible on the line. He's reading something. Couch zips it. Got his man. It's the inside receiver. That's Jimmy Robinson for the first time today. He's out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. So he's back with the Lucky Boys. And today he tried to beat his home state. A well, quick scene. Watch how quickly he gets rid of the football. He carries the football high. And you like that in the quarterback. You don't want him carrying that football down. When he carries that ball high, he only has to move it about six, eight inches. And bang, he's in throwing position. Hollingshed made the stop for Georgia. Now Kentucky second down and two yards to go. Here comes another on the line. line. And off up the middle, White hit in the backfield. Good penetration that time. Paul Schnellings comes across, senior out of LaGrange to make the play, and stops Kentucky short of the first down. Again, this hole is going to close quickly. You're going to see 96 spin right in there. Bang, right in the hole. That's what that's what you want to teach when you teach tackling. Get those big arms around them. Hit them in right in the middle of the chest. They used to say, look at the numbers. Tackle the numbers. So third down. Homer, the tailback for Kentucky. A.J. Simon, the blocking back. Pitch back. Homer looking for a block. And I think Georgia stuffed him. The dogs hunkered down. Grant again, number 58, makes the play. Boy, he's been all over the field, hasn't he? Boy, he has been. Now, last time, you remember, he went for it on fourth down and won. Down on the one-yard line and lost three yards. They've got about a yard here, Bob. You only you almost turned around and say, well, gosh, you should get the points. But Hal Mummy says, we score sevens here at Kentucky. So you just know Kentucky's going for it. Georgia fans are wanting their dogs to hunker down again. Homer's the tailback. Jobs to throw it to Geese. Craig Geese got one on one coverage against Champ Bailey. And Tim Couch and Yeast beat the Heisman Trophy candidate. Boy, did he beat him. And what he did is he gave him an outside fake. He cut right to the post. And Couch saw him. That was the only person that Couch was going to. Again, watch right here. Fake sees him right there. Come open and look, just lays the football. Great touch. And Yeast, the little guy, goes up high. He plays big. Seth Hansen adds the extra point on the Kentucky Wildcats. Take a 17-7 lead. Craig Yeast and Tim Couch have two touchdowns. And the Wildcats lead here in Lexington. in the kickoff and the kick will be
going to chant Bailey at the three yard line. Bailey finds a running room. Bailey out to the 44 yard line. Wow. Terrific return by Champ Bailey. And Bob, this is a really interesting play because he's only going to go to Yees. Throws the ball up high and gives him a great touch. Now watch right here. He fakes Champ Bailey, takes the out break. He gives him that back, that little shoulder to the backside, then comes right back to the post. And you can see what Tim Couch does. He's done this a lot of times this year. Run to the sideline, cheer, and who greets him? Hal Mummy. And it was such a soft pass. I mean, he just gave Yees plenty of time to get there. Yeast has six catches. 79 yards already and you see the scoring drive 15 plays eight minutes though that's a long time drive for them it's been the best play so far for Georgia just give it to Quincy and get out of the way and Carter takes it out of bounds as he's run out of bounds for Kentucky by uh, Jeff Zerker well the one thing again Georgia is not going to panic because they're too good a football team ball spotted at the 49 yard line game of six so it'll be second down and four coming up for the Georgia Bulldogs. Next week, we'll get a chance to see the Tennessee Volunteers. The Volunteers will be over in Columbia, South Carolina, as they go up against the Gamecocks and Anthony Wright, Al Wilson, who has led that brilliant Tennessee defense so far this year against Anthony Wright. And Ronnie Bradley on the carry. A first down as he gets it into Kentucky territory down to the 42-yard line. Zerker makes the stop again. And Bradley comes up limping a little bit. Well, Bob, you talk about poise. And I'm sure that's what Jim Donovan's telling his team. Have poise out there. This football game is not over. It's a long football game. As I said, Joe Kines told his defense, we're going to play 60 minutes. The same thing with offense. Play 60 minutes. Play as hard as you can. And when the game's over, you look up the scoreboard to see who wins. Tony Small's in motion. And the pitch back goes to Bradley. Bradley gets hit right in the face by Chris Gayton. And Zerker helps him out. 33. Gate comes up and lays a big stick on him. Now Mummy's team shut out the dogs in the first quarter. That's been Georgia's most productive quarter of the season. They had scored 72 points in the first quarter, but none today. They got their touchdown in the second on that brilliant run by Quincy Carter. Carter now. Tunnel screen. Tony Small. And he's knocked down after a pickup of about two. You know, both these teams have got to see that play in practice all the time, and that time, Kentucky's John Raider is able to snuff it out and make the play. Well, again, a little tiny tunnel pass underneath. You try to get those big linemen, but if you don't, if you, get, you get the blocks there, but boom, the safety comes up. He can flat out stick you. Well, Mike Major, his defense trying to come up with a third down stop. They play a lot of people at Kentucky. Mike Major says we recruit them. We think they're pretty good players when we recruit them. If they work hard, we're going to put them in the game. They want speed. And what Georgia needs to do is pick up 15 yards. They can't go short. Oh, he's got time. Carter fires it for Champ Bailey. And he had it, but can't hang on to it. Marvin Major laid one on Quincy Carter, and a flag is down. Back in the Georgia backfield. I think that may be a late hit. Major just leveled him right there. And you can see right there. You see what happens as he throws first to the foul, ground. Roughing the passer against the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Wow, that's a big penalty. What's going to be fourth down? They were going to punt the football. And now they keep this drive alive. It's a huge play. Watch Major. Watch what happens here. The ball's off. Now, right there, he tackles him. It's not, it's not the penalty is hitting him, but it's when he threw him to the ground is what caused that personal foul. Almost a great play by Bailey. See right here, right there. Now watch right there. He doesn't let off him. That's a tough one. You're so anxious to get there, and you don't want to take the emotional part of the football game out, but that's a costly penalty. Drive stays alive. And George has got a first down at the Kentucky 30-yard line. Alanis Gary pops over one blue shirt, and he's stumped by the second wave. Chris Gayton got terrific penetration, is able to plant it, and then Kentucky's able to get some help from the inside. Well, Georgia needs to come back when they when they have that play that solid play down the middle maybe to run that play to Champ Bailey on that cross or look for Tony Small but they're going to have to pick up yardage throwing the football. 
Again, they've been successful using that little sprint action where they've been able to run Quincy Carter's strong side or out to the flat and use his running or his passing ability. Michael Greer split out way to the left. He didn't play last week because of injury. Got his tight end wide open. Larry Brown rumbles down inside the five-yard line. Brown, also the basketball player, senior out of Decatur, came wide open, and Quincy Carter laid it out there for him perfectly. Boy, he did. He came wide open because he got such time to pass. Look at this. He's got all those men rushing. Look at Carter. Just stand back there. Nobody in his face that time. And the big man, Larry Brown, 6'5", 270, he rumbles downfield and brings that pass down. That kept that drive alive. Do you remember that uh, penalty? Zerker made the touchdown saving tackle. Uh, here comes George the pitch back to Gary. Gary hops over one and then hops into the end zone. Alanda's Gary for Georgia pulls the Bulldogs to within four points. Boy, Scores his fifth touchdown of the season. Boy, and Marvin Love, all he did was get air. Watch what Gary does to Marvin Love, number five. Love's going to come up. He's the cornerback. He's got the force. You'll see him coming to your picture right there. Boom, he just jumps over top of him, gets those feet right back down on the ground for a score. Senior out of Washington, D.C., was with Jim Donnan at Marshall and came with him to Georgia. And it pays off today with a touchdown. So the Bulldogs answer the Kentucky strike. And now it's a three-point game again. 3.09 to go in the second quarter in Commonwealth. Back after a word from your local SEC station. Carter's numbers in the first half, five of nine. Had the one interception and a great long 50-yard or 49-yard touchdown strike. So Georgia now with the ball and a chance to take the lead for the first time today if the Bulldogs could muster a scoring drop. Pitch back goes to Ronnie Bradley. Bradley gets knocked a couple of times, stays on balance. Finally, Jeff Zerker able to knock him down. As Bradley... Getting a chance to play. Last week we mentioned 25 yards against Vanderbilt. Had only 23 carries in the entire season coming into today's contest. But getting a lot more work because of the injury situation with Patrick Pass. Well, Jim Donovan would like nothing better than to drive this football the length of the field, get a score, get back in the lead of this football game, or at least tie it, and take some of this momentum out of Kentucky. I can tell you it was a spirited locker room for Kentucky at half. Drop play. Alanis Gary, and he's short of the first down. As good penetration that time, John Raider stays at home and cleans up to play number 93. That looked like the Hulk Hogan defense there. It was funny to talk about Kentucky. They named all their defense after wrestling stars. Well, they need a and wrestling holds too, <laughs> but not Goldberg. This nah, week, no, uh, no Goldberg in this one. Hayes, the Georgia, of course, former defensive lineman, all SEC player, that's now. Probably the biggest star in professional wrestling with the WCW. They said this week the holds are all WWF. Third down. Kentucky trying to hold them right now. Carter can't hear the snap. Carter turns it up, gets a first down, he's loose again. Quincy Carter in a foot race with Marvin Love. And Love finally catches up to him at the 24-yard line. What an athlete. Quincy Carter, a baseball star. And uh, now a star quarterback in the SEC. And Bob, he just makes things happen. Watch this. There's no pitch on this play. Just cuts right back inside. Now watch the vision looking across here. Sees this opening. Now he knows Love's coming from the left. He's going to try to jump right around him. Boom. Gets around one right there. I should say Love, number five, is the one who tackles him. But he gets around Gate and he just kind of just jumps right around. Well, that was a huge play. That's, again, those momentum builders. That's what changed the momentum in the first half. It's Quincy Carter taking it on himself. He's done it right here in the second half. Steve Herndon had a big block that time. The springing champ Bailey on the end of the round. That's how he waited for him. Jeff Zerker plants him after a pickup of just a couple. That's the eighth tackle today for the Kentucky safety. Jeff Zerker, the senior out of Hodgdenville, a Rhodes Scholar, 4.0. He's already, of course, graduated. He's in taking some graduate school classes, trying to get a master's degree in diplomacy. Well, you know, with the loss of uh, David Johnson back there, Zerker has really had to fill in, and he's played well. He's played strong. 
A lot of people said that they were going to try to pick on him today because he was kind of the new man in the defensive secondary, but he's played well. 126 yards rushing. Or Vincent running out this time. The blitz and McCree streaks through and Marlon McCree drops him. The sophomore out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Boy, McCree actually gets blocked right into him. Watch Jennings. Boom, just blocked him right into him. Number 75 is Jennings. He just blocks McCree on the outside blitz. You'll see him. So you'll see Jennings 25 come out there, hit him. McCree is the speedster out there. He's small. 6'1", 205 pounds, but he's the leading sacker coming into this game with six. Now he's got at least seven. Carter facing a third down and a bunch. He's got to get it to the 15-yard line. Kentucky not blitzing. Carter lets it go. Mark Small in the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Tony Small got one-on-one -on -one with Chris Gaten, and the Bulldogs for the first time today have the lead. Boy, Kentucky got an excellent rush up front. Mark Jacobs was in the backfield, but Carter just zeroed in and just found his wide out left side of your screen on a fly pattern. Just looked long. You see Carter make the adjustment, throw it high, looks that football in, and Tony Small comes down with a huge play. That's his third touchdown of the season. And Hap Hines in to nail the extra point. And for the first time today, the Georgia Bulldogs are playing with the lead. Jim Donnan's team scores first. And Quincy Carter leading the Bulldogs back, and they now have the lead 21-17 at Kentucky. Although Georgia just took their first lead of the game at 21 to 17, Kentucky came right back and drove the ball down to the Georgia 25, where Seth Hansen kicked a 42-yard field goal to cut the Dogs' lead to one. We'll pick up the action on the next drive after Brett Milliken gives Georgia great field position after a 33-yard kickoff return. And now Georgia has excellent field position as they start at the 46. You see his passing numbers, his rushing numbers are actually better today. Swing it out. Got his man carried down the sideline. And he gets it to the 38-yard line. And making the stop, Zerker, and again, Dennis Johnson. You see the standings in the east. Georgia trying to stay one game behind of Tennessee. Kentucky mathematically is still in the SEC East. They would have to get some help. But uh, the Kentucky team, if they can win out, that game against Tennessee at the end of the year could be very, very big. But they've got enough on their hands right now trying to figure out a way to beat Jim Donnan's dogs here. Well, Kentucky's thinking right now they need a turnover. They need something to happen positively. Gary up in the middle. First down and four to the 30. All knock from Deer Live to Zerker. And finally, Kentucky gets him on the ground as Marvin Major comes up to help out along with Marvin Love. You get, the, you get the feeling that uh, Georgia's going to take control of this football game back if Kentucky will allow him. Watch this hole on the tail end right here. Chris Terry, good down block right there. And then Gary gets to the outside, and he just makes it from there. He carries him an extra four or five yards. He's another one of those ones, as you say, just doesn't want to go down. And as veteran Georgia line with those two outstanding tackles, Terry and Stitko, really trying to exert itself now and take control of the line of scrimmage. Carter rolling out left. He's got some room. Down the sideline, and he's run out of bounds. Down in front of him was Jermaine Wiggins, the tight end. He sealed the corner, and Carter was able to get it to another first down. Boy, he is actually a weapon, isn't he? Oh, there? he is a weapon because he's got that great speed. It starts out as a pitch play, but there's really not a pitch involved. All you have is you have a trail man behind Carter, but Carter is reading the end, seeing if he's coming upfield. He's going to duck inside him. But it is purely Quincy Carter running the option, and the option is just him. So it's a first down, George, at the 15. Bulldogs scored on their first possession and trying to do it again on their second. Gary puts Collard out of bounds. Kentucky met him at the pass. Jeff Snedeker comes over to make the play, the junior out of Salesville, Ohio. Well, again, if you're Kentucky, you're thinking in here, now you've got the defense. The defense has got an advantage now because you've got the end zone. That's like a defensive player. So you don't have to guard as deep so you can take a little bit more of a chance. This is uh, 
Defense number 29. So the players check their wristbands, figure out what alignment they're supposed to be. The number has nothing, play. Bob, the number has nothing to do with the type of defense it is. It's purely number 29 on their wristbands. Carter waits. Patience and now he's punching. Zerker said, I've had wow. enough of that. <laughs> Boy, Zerker made a great tackle that time. Just picture perfect. Got his helmet right in the middle of Quincy Carter. Got both hands on the legs and just picked them right up. This is the way you want to tackle. Watch number 49. Comes into your screen right here. Carter trying to pick up some blocks. Comes Zerker. Bang. Right there. Lift him up. Drive him back. Textbook right there. Now Bailey goes out of the game. What is the huge down for Kentucky? They want to stop them here. They know they can move the football on offense. Their hope for a big stop is they can hold them to a field goal. They'll consider it a victory on this series. Georgia, they want to build up the score. Michael Greer and Tony Small to the top of the screen. Wiggins in motion. Carter looking, dumps it out. And he's got his man. Touchdown to Wiggins. That was the man in motion. And Jermaine Wiggins scores his first touchdown this year. And the Georgia lead balloons out to seven. Well, Bob, what happened on that play is Marvin Love, number five, who's the corner, who do you think would be out there, blitzes on the play. You'll see him coming to your screen right in there. You see Love coming in there at number five. And then the, the coverage is just not there. Zerker's not able to get over there and pick up the tight end. Half Hines drills the extra point. And Georgia now enjoying its biggest lead of the day as the Bulldogs have scored again here in the third quarter. And Georgia now leads by a score of 28 to 20. Back to Lexington, but first a word from your local SEC station. Good blocks up front, and Homer just sees the hole. What you want from your running back, you right there he is, number 42. He's going to find that hole and just zip right through it. See right there, boom, down inside. Good block in there by Comstock. Number 70 drove his man down inside. That play may have been designed to go to the inside, but Homer made a nice cut off the block by Chris Comstock. He's also a graduate student here at Kentucky. He's already earned his undergraduate degree. And off goes to White. And that time tripped up, but still a good pickup on first down, almost five yards, as Grant makes another play for Georgia, number 58. Well, you see how quickly Tim Couch can get you back in this football game. Nobody knows that better than Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator for Georgia. He knows that you've got to be able, you've got to make Couch drive a long way. You've got to score every time you get it. Couch now moves under center on second down. They have some plays where it's designed He's under center, but most of the time it's Tim's decision where he feels more comfortable. Homer made something out of nothing on that play. Boy, that telling you what, that was a terrific cut right at the line of scrimmage. Wow, did you see him jump over? I think it was 97, Marcus Stroud, who was in the backfield. He jumps over top of him. As soon as he gets the ball, he just leaps over top of him and then makes that little buzz. Watch this, you're going to see penetration. That's 97, right there. Look, right there, 98, I should say, that is. But again, that's Millard, but just makes something out of nothing. But a third down possession play here for Kentucky. They need, you see, right at one yard. And Homer's going to try it. And Homer's going to get it. And Homer's getting it down to the 16 yard line. And you know, it's almost as if Derek Homer has woken up. You remember him last year? He was quite a force last year. This year he kind of fell asleep. He missed some opportunities. And all of a sudden he knows that he can run this football. And you can see how hard he's running. And so Kentucky has one of their wideouts limp off the field as Kentucky has Jermaine White, the sophomore who has battled some injuries this year. Now he limps off here. First down, Cats. White. They pull him back as Richard Seymour able to wrap him up and push him back. Hey, the senior line for Kentucky controlled the line of scrimmage that time, Bob. Webster and Comstock just drove off the football and got a good push. Jason Watts, Mr. Alligator Hunter in the middle. <laughs> they just, Second down. 
They just can try. They just controlled it. Ye slotted, or exactly uh, split out to this near side. Champ Bailey has him one on one. Homer up the middle. Hands over Smart gets it down close to the goal line. He just lowered his shoulder and drilled Kirby Smart. First down, Kentucky, first and goal at the two yard line. And Homer and White running hard today. Boy, watch this. Watch this hit right here. Hey, did you hear that hit up here? Wow. That's tough running when you just lower your shoulder. Here come the Cats. First and goal. Homer up the middle. Did he get in? He's close. They say he did not get in. Will Witherspoon kept him out of the end zone. Bob, they're controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Kentucky, a surprise, able to drive the football and run it. Mummy tells them to be quiet. We're trying to get the plays in. Yell after we score the touchdown. 28-20. Kentucky down by eight. Scores his fourth touchdown of the season. And now the Cats, Dave, you got to think they're going to go for two here. Yeah, I think you do go for two in this situation. Well, if it's not going to hurt you, field, you're going to need a field goal. I don't know that they've gone for two, have they, Bob? No, nope, first time. They're going to try. This to tie the game. Is short. Arantis Grant keeps him out of the end zone, and Georgia keeps the lead. So Kentucky scores, but they fail on the two-point conversion. And Jim Donnan's team, he talked with Joe Kynes about how to stop them next time. But Hal Mummy's team is back in it, down by two, with 2.56 to go. They have a very impressive drive. Oh, it certainly was. It really was a great drive. It was control the ball. Interesting that they were able to control the ball on the ground. And it was Derek Homer. Just put that head down, make that big target. We saw him run over people. He got the wake-up call. And I'll tell you this, he responded. Georgia seemingly could have had this game in check, but a Ronnie Bradley fumble in Kentucky territory gave Tim Couch and company one more chance to win this game. The Wildcats have the ball on their own 24-yard line with less than two minutes left in the contest. Can the Cats do it? Let's find out. All Georgia had to do was get the first down, and then they kneel down four times and run the clock out. They had the first down. Now Kentucky has a chance. Couch has got his man. Coleman, first down. Clock stops. Couch got planted at the other end. Couch might be hurt. No, he's not. He's up. But he took a heck of a shot, Couch did. Now he tries to gather his composure as he runs to the line. Watch the hit on the tail end of this. Backside, backside just levels him right there. Number 38, that's Cochran. Good hit. Kentucky, Homer, pops it outside. Spinning. First down, they're going to see if they keep the clock rolling. I think he got out of bounds. Yes, got out of bounds. Well, Kentucky couch is still hurt after yeah. that hit from Cochran. Well, he's trying to gather his composure. Now you start to think about the leg. You start to think about the leg of Hanson. How far can he kick a field goal? 45 yards, maybe? As long as this 41. So that means they've got to get the ball down close to the 20-yard line. A lot of time left. They still have that timeout if they get in trouble. Minute 30 left. The one thing you don't want to take is a sack in here. Georgia, they've got to get pressure on them. The big linemen have got to come. Pitch it out to White. Got his first down. White gets into Georgia territory at the 40 yard. Well, they're going to mark it right at midfield. But the clock stops while they mark it. Now you want to get up on the line of scrimmage. The clock is stopped while you move the chains. Get right up on the line of scrimmage. Let everybody know what the play is. A lot of emotion here. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. Just relax. A lot of time left. First down, Cats. Cats is calling an audible. 
Dougie Allen trying to swing it out to him. Tell you what, Georgia had that one diagnosed pretty well as Orantis Grant had slid out there and was getting ready to lay one on Dougie Allen. As it turns out, it stops the clock, so it's second down. Seth Hansen warming up, hoping to get a shot. Won the game last week against LSU, remember? Second down. Homer stays in to protect. Count has his man, Craig East. First down. First down. And that's his first catch of the second half. A lot of time left, a minute and two seconds. They're down at the 35-yard line. The clock stops. They still have their timeout, Bob. They've got a lot of time. Now, if you're Georgia, do you blitz? Or do you do you drop back into coverage? The market, and they roll the clock under a minute to go. As you said, he's got to get to about the 20-yard line. That's a safe field goal from the 20-yard line. Homer on the draw. Tough play because now the clock rolls. Now they got to hurry. They got to spike the ball to stop the clock. Well, this is this is a long field goal right here. If you were to kick from here, you're looking at about a 52 yarder. You want to pick up about maybe 10, 12 yards, get down to that under 45 yard range to give Hanson a shot. If you got a chance to get that first down, that would stop the clock. But remember, too, Bob, they still have their timeout left. Couch swings it out to Homer. Georgia covers it well, and he can't get out of bounds. Well, before down, they're going to have to call their timeout now. Clock rolls down to 10 seconds. Now they call the timeout. For the second straight week now, Seth Hansen will get a chance to win the game for the Wildcats. Well, the thing that you think about here is that it's going, it's got to be a low trajectory kick to get the distance on it. There's not really any wind. The flag is straight down. There's no wind either way. Mommy wouldn't fake this, would he? No, I hope not. Here we go. 30, 49 yard attempt. This to give Kentucky a win. Matt Mummy to hold it. He bobbled a snap, and now Mummy's got to take off. The ball is intercepted on the pitch by Mann. Larry Mann makes the interception. The snap was low. Matt Mummy bobbled it. They don't get the field goal off, and Georgia has beaten Kentucky 28 to 26. The kicking game failed Kentucky this week. And Jim Donnan's dogs go to four and one in the SEC. They stay one game behind Tennessee and they win a big one on the road today. What a way to end this game. Only two points and a mishandled snap on a field goal attempt would decide the battle of the SEC's two best quarterbacks. Players and fans on both sides still have to be wondering what if. All was not lost for Kentucky, however. The very next week, they came out on the winning side of another two-point game by beating Mississippi State 37-35. They would also have the last laugh over Georgia by being selected to represent the SEC on New Year's Day in the Outback Bowl against Penn State. Georgia would go on to win the Peach Bowl that year in a thriller over Virginia by, guess what, two points. For College Flash Classics, I'm Dave Neal saying thanks so much for watching, and we will see you down the road. Man in. Tyler, touchdown! And that's exactly what they want to do, the pass, touchdown! Howard up the middle. Dunn still on his feet. Warwick Dunn may score.